What would you think is the most abundant man-made material on Earth? Steel, plastic, glass? The answer is concrete. And while it's an incredibly useful and ubiquitous material, producing it releases a large amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There is technology available that prevents the gas from being released, but it comes at an additional cost, at least at first, and only a few dozen out of thousands of American plants use it. You can wake up in the morning, you're in contact with it, you go to bed there, and then as you eat, sleep, play throughout the day, you're in contact with concrete at I some mean, point. everything we see here is pretty much concrete. Exactly. All the buildings have concrete in it, the roadway has concrete, and everything you see, there's concrete in it somewhere. But concrete has an emissions problem. The energy-intensive process of making concrete releases massive amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. Its main ingredient is responsible for 7% of global CO2 emissions. But what if there was a way that instead of releasing carbon dioxide, concrete could trap it forever? Ready to suit up? Ready to Thank you. There's a reason concrete is everywhere. At Thomas Concrete in Atlanta, it's their business. There is no material that will do the same things as concrete. You cannot have the same type of strength levels. You cannot have the same type of durability. I mean, it is the second most consumed substance on the planet after water. Correct. Concrete is a mixture of rocks, sand, water, and most importantly, cement to bind it all together. But cement has a huge carbon footprint. One pound of cement releases one pound of CO2 emissions. It's the second highest industrial source of CO2 on the planet. But without cement, concrete doesn't hold up skyscrapers. All right, so this is what's different about your operation here. This is, this is kind of the brains of the beast here. This silver tank is the newest thing in concrete. It's called Carbon Cure. This innovative system injects carbon dioxide into the concrete as it's being mixed. When the concrete hardens, those otherwise harmful emissions are sequestered forever, before they ever even reach our atmosphere. Christy Gamble is part of the team behind Carbon Cure's technology. We actually convert the CO2 into a mineral. It's a stone. It's getting trapped in the concrete forever. And the best part about it is that the mineral itself actually improves the compressive strength of the concrete. That's right. The real selling point here? Yes. Adding CO2 actually makes the concrete stronger. That means producers like Thomas Concrete can use less cement in their mixtures and still achieve the same strength. Less cement equals fewer emissions. Compression tests like this one prove that the concrete made with Carbon Cure is just as hardy as the traditional stuff. You go to any major city right now, there's construction happening all over the place. Exactly. If we're able to reduce 5% of the carbon footprint of the concrete industry, that's a significant change from where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if this technology was deployed across the globe, we could reduce about 700 megatons of CO2 every year. And that's the same as taking 150 million cars off the road every year. It's going to take the concrete industry changing the way they do things. Carbon Cure says about 90 concrete plants across the U.S. and Canada use its technology right now. That's a fraction of the estimated 5,500 plants in the U.S. alone. The concrete industry is very slow to take on new change and innovation, and it's understandable because they work in an industry where quality is everything. The implications of sending concrete to sites that's not up to quality can be catastrophic. Ultimately, it all comes down to the bottom line. Companies pay to use Carbon Cure's signature system and have to buy CO2 from a factory where it's emitted. But they save money by using less of their most expensive ingredient, cement.